Welcome back to the morning show here on the Rise News, where we're still covering uh, the COVID-19 updates here in Nigeria. We do have our reporter on ground at the International Airport here in Lagos, uh, Femi Akinsoya. Uh, Femi, Femi has been speaking with some passengers intending to uh, embark on those trips uh, today, just as Nigeria closes its international airspace uh, today. But let's see what Femi has been up to. Tell us where you're traveling to today. Okay, I'm traveling to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, via Doha? By Doha. Lagos to Doha to Malaysia. Is this, a plan, is this a journey that you have planned weeks in advance, or is this something that you're only having to do recently because of the coronavirus outbreak? No, this is uh, my return ticket to my base in Malaysia. Today, 23rd of uh, March, is my return ticket to Malaysia. So I'm not running away because of coronavirus. <laughs> Uh, are you confident that you will be able to make it onto the flight? Have you heard anything from your airline saying that the flight could be suspended or cancelled? Uh, anyway, before I, before I wanted to extend this uh, trip to April, but I called the airline. They told me that they, will not, uh, they don't have any flight April. It's after today, 23rd, it's their last flight, you know. So apart from today, there will, there will be no other flight in uh, right. May. So I said to travel today. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Wish you a safe trip. And thank you. Yeah, so Welcome back to the morning show. Well, uh, Femi Akinsai will be updating us from the International Airport here in Lagos. Uh, Rufai, let's join the conversation. Right. As COVID-19 rages the world, creates panic and inflicts pain on people, experts are warning that its effect on the domestic and global economy may be worse than envisaged. The chairman and founder of AACS Consulting and Principal Investments, Dr. Falil Ayo Abina, who stated this while participating in the Commonwealth Africa Summit 2020 held in London recently, said the effects of coronavirus on the local and global economy will still be felt long after a cure is found for the disease. Well, in Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari says his government will explore all alternatives to protect Nigerians from the economic impact of coronavirus. He spoke after the Presidential Economic Advisory Council, led by Professor Doi Salami, painted a sobering scenario of what could happen to the Nigerian economy if the COVID-19 pandemic persists for too long. The council noted the possibility of slower economic growth as supply and demands in the international oil market drops. It also considered the chances of trade imbalance and drop in foreign reserves and recommended priority spending on health care and reprioritization of expenditure on infrastructure and mobilizing the private sector to strengthen key sectors of the Nigerian economy. Joining us now from our legal studio is Dr. Obia Ramadu, Director General, African Center for Supply Chain and President Association of Outsourcing Professionals of Nigeria, Together, we'll be looking at the effect of coronavirus on global supply chain. Uh, it's a pleasure having you. Uh, it's so sad to be here at this point in time. Nobody saw this coming. But thus far, what's the effect? Ryanair, one of Europe's, you know, uh, biggest in terms of connection and flight made per day airlines, is cutting a lot of jobs. Logistics coming around the world are scaling down. Is this the end time for outsourcing and logistics? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's, it's not the end time, but it's bad times, really. The, the entire global economy is on its knees at the moment. Of course, we know 
that uh, China is the largest manufacturing center, the largest exporting center. They're also one of the biggest importing centers, the biggest trading center. So the impact that the corona had had on China will reach the rest of the world for a very, very long time. Now, so many industries are almost crippled. The airline, the, the hotels, because tourism is suffering, the manufacturing companies, because everything that affects China affects the world. There are companies whose key raw materials come from China. So it means that those companies will shut down their factories. When you were starting, you mentioned about loss of jobs and the rest of them, yeah, that will happen. Jobs will be lost because, uh, I mean, some companies are either paying off or asking people to stay at home Right now, uh, the, the, the future of work, which was expecting to come uh, maybe a few months or a few years' time, has started now because so many companies are shut down physically, but they are working online. Companies are having meetings with Zoom and other uh, IT uh, sources that they can use. So it's, quite a, it's bringing a whole change. Supply chain has been affected seriously in the manufacturing sector, in the health sector, everywhere. So it's really, really a big problem. The outbreak is estimated to be costing shipping com the sh shipping industry about $350 million weekly. And like you rightfully mentioned, manufacturers as well as their allied businesses have been affected by this as well. Now, if we're looking at the supply chain and its uh, effect on uh, the bringing in of raw materials, of course, how do we begin to sustain operations? Because even though there has been a disruption, we still do need to continue to create most of these items. How do we sustain operations? Thank you very much. This is where the practical supply chain comes to play. This is when we shall know uh, companies with resilient supply chain, companies with agile supply chain. Because it's a big lesson. If any company before now has been depending only on one source of raw material from China, this is a lesson. The company will have to now start looking for other options. It also means that people will have to start relationship management is concerned. You see, the challenge now is that you can't even forecast any longer. You can't forecast any longer. Maybe your forecast is probably weekly. Maybe before it used to be maybe uh, quarterly, half yearly, annually. You can't forecast because every moment things are happening, changes are coming. So it means that companies need to sit down and re-strategize. Yes, production may be cut down, but we need to optimize production and distribution as much as we can. So the, the fact is that this lesson that the COVID-19 uh, is teaching supply chain is quite a whole lot. Then the people, too, this is when the best of supply chain professionals are called for. This is when you have to use everything you've got to ensure that you keep your company afloat because that's why you are hired. Because every supply chain is meant to give a company competitive advantage. If it doesn't give it, then it's not worth it. So right now, staff are called upon to bring up all the strategies they have read in books and learned and have practiced. That's why I've come to so many supply chain platforms Knowledge is being shared. People are making suggestions of what need to do. What need. People are calling for raw materials. Please, do, we need this. Do you have it? Which is the essence of such platforms? And those who could help are helping. Then in terms of, OK, if I can't help you, this is what I think you should do. So it, it's quite a, a lesson. And the uh, supply chain will adjust probably forever after this incident. Global challenge. And you have painted that picture. But can you paint? A scenario for us, the, the picture we have here in Nigeria, what is supply chain looking like at the moment? And what industries are the most affected, as well as the spectrum? Are we seeing demand, uh, the raw materials, or the delivery? Which of the spectrum end is most affected as well? OK, Nigerian supply chain had its challenges before COVID-19, one of which 
and the biggest is the absence of or deficit of logistics infrastructure, which has caused high rise in the cost of doing business in Nigeria. For example, recently the customs said they want to stop batch operations to move containers out of the port. You wonder why would anybody want to do that, even at this point in time, that you know that it is easier for camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a container to get out of the port through the, through the gates. So the, we, we have our challenges, but it's now complicated. As for industries that are affected, of course, the airline industries are probably the, the, the first victim. Then the hotels, because uh, tourism right now, give, just look at the, the, the instructions from the Lagos State government, nightclubs, everybody, everybody is affected. So look at the health sector. We already had very serious challenges in the healthcare supply chain, especially in the area of uh, last mile deliveries. Right now, it's obviously going to be more difficult. Globally, there's also a lack of a shortage of truck drivers. And we're not free from it either, even before the COVID-19. So the, 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 the estate industries are affected. Of course, the manufacturing industries had their challenge before, before now. So with this now, both from the raw material point of view, now, even the distribution angle, which was suffering from the deficit of infrastructure, is compounded by the presence of uh, COVID-19. So it's really, really hard time. Because if you already lack infrastructure, you had challenges before the additional one that is now affecting those who have excellent infrastructure. If it comes in, obviously, you know that there's a lot more trouble up here. We'll just go to a quick break. Now, we'll come back and talk some more. Uh, just stay with us. All right, welcome back. Uh, still, the morning show here on the Rising Day. We're talking to Dr. Obiara Madhu. Uh, Dr. Obiara, real quickly, I, I, uh, Dr. Madhu, the question that comes to mind when you started talking about the sectors that are affected, for me, will be the logistics of medical materials. Take, for instance, one thing very prime in the, in the fight against coronavirus is the fact that you need ventilators to be able to have, keep people that are having very severe symptoms to keep their breathing on. You need other things like reagents, test kits, and the likes. The logistics surrounding medical you know, materials and deliverables this season, don't we have to look for a better means of delivering these things? Because this is very dire. People's lives are involved. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 I saw uh, a clip yesterday where uh, China flew in um, a lot of materials for COVID-19 to Italy and the rest of them. I mean, such things, you need to apply different type of logistics to move those things around now. You probably need to use helicopters. You probably need to... Availability of those things is even a challenge as we speak. It is not impossible that there are some of the things, some of these items that you have mentioned that are stuck at the port as we speak. So what it means is that authorities have to understand. I mean, the custom authorities, the port authorities, the, the, if there are such items, we have to quickly do unconventional things to get them out of the port so that they can go to where they are needed. So the, 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 then the last mile delivery, getting them. I think, you know, health infrastructure is also a big challenge, just like, like logistics infrastructure. We are 200 million people. We have, uh, I think, uh, five testing centers and the rest of them. So reaching the people with all the things that are needed, like you mentioned, is a challenge. So it means that we have to apply unconventional methods. That's from the government circle. If you have to fly them, thank God, even though the, I mean, the airports have been, international airports have, have been shot to airline, uh, foreign airlines, we can still fly in things because essential uh, flights are still allowed to land. But there is a challenge. What I'm saying is that we have to design new strategies to be able to combat this very particular challenge. 
are new strategies and unconventional ways of tackling this. Now, we do know that after China recorded their last case of uh, the coronavirus, they went on a nationwide uh, uh, sweep and cleaning of the nation. Now, is it possible for the federal government to begin, uh, to begin looking at how to quarantine these ships at ports, the crew changes, and begin to ensure uh, the health of the seafarers and passengers to enable a, 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 a boost in the supply chain for us? Thank you very much. This is a very big challenge. You know that over 90% of the world cargo go by, by sea, which is why everybody in the world, including the UN, is interested in, in what is happening in the shipping industry. What this means is that if shipping goes down, the world will go down with it. It will probably be worse than COVID-19. Now, obviously, the shipping industry is also suffering because the, cargos, the cargo to carry are not there. About uh, the, the, the crew, I, I agree with you. I think there's need because right now, I think there have been several cases where uh, the crew of a ship have been found uh, um, testing positive and the rest of them. As part of our policy, I don't, I'm not, I, I don't know if I've had an announcement that we've shut down our borders. I think also that every ship that comes in now that the crew should be quarantined. But that is one way of handling, handling that, so that, um, I mean, we will stay safe from that very particular direction. If we stop the air, then there will also be the need. It has implications to things coming, but the fact is that, the, the, I mean, the, the port operators know how to get those things out of the, out of the, the ship. So it means that the, the crew can remain in the ship. They need to be quarantined for the safety of uh, other port operation workers and for all of, all of us. Indeed. Well, uh, this has revealed the vulnerabilities of many countries and the dependency on China. But as China uh, tries to pick up operations and ramp up those operations, it might take months, really, to get uh, a clear understanding of how much we have lost. But do you foresee a situation where we would be recording shortages of this very essential um, needed goods and services? It's recovering. Other nations are getting into real challenges. Their factories are beginning to produce. Our factories are beginning to close down and elsewhere in the world. So that's why the impact of this is going to last longer than we think. It's not about China recovering and then having their factories work. The fact is that those markets that they used to have, are they readily available? Can ships easily go and bat in those places, even if they are ready to ship to those places? So it's a challenge that we're going to live with. Logistics and supply chain will suffer from this for, for, for a, a bit of a long time. Logistics companies, in whatever way, in all the modes of tra transportation, of course, in Nigeria, will shut down the railway. And then every other component of the logistics industry is uh, suffering. So it will be a long impact because some companies right now are shutting down, sending staff away. That means that their demand will, for raw material will not be immediate until everybody sees clearly as to where we are going. So it, it's something, it's a waiting game, really. And no, it's very difficult to put a, a, a figure as to what the loss is. China will probably start calculating their own, but I think for our own, it's not even time to start. We can only calculate what we have lost. We will probably not be in a position to project what we are going to lose. But the fact is that what happens when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. So companies will sit back, like I mentioned, some companies now in terms of management meetings, everything is done on Zoom. Some people still work, but social distancing, distancing is being observed. And uh, life will return to normal someday. Uh, so how should we align ourselves? You said the future of work is here already, and it's not going to change. How do we align ourselves going forward in a country where we don't even have proper infrastructure? <sighs> well, somebody, somebody actually posted in one of the platforms. He said, look, 
Yes, we have asked people to go home. We've given them data. They have their laptop. We've asked them to go and work from home. And the person asked, where will they get the electricity to work when the laptop runs out of power? That is a challenge. But the truth is that that is reality. It means we have to live with it somehow. So that's why I said we have to apply a lot of unconventional methods to get out of this very particular problem. We, we don't have, we, we have infrastructural deficit, yes. So we have to just figure out. I have the challenge in my office. Everybody has that challenge. But the fact is that we have to figure out. Somehow we have lived with this lack of electricity for a long time. So we have to find how to get around it. So it, it, it's, uh, that feature of work, we know it, it, it came suddenly. We also know that it came with challenges. So it means that organization by organization, we will have to figure out how we're going to sort that out until uh, things improve. Well, we have to thank you, Dr. Obiora Amadu, for coming on the show this morning. Hopefully, uh, we don't get caught napping. This is the time to act. But we do appreciate you coming on the show this morning. And just before we go, let's bring you some breaking news. Nigeria has now recorded the first casualty from the COVID-19 outbreak. According to the NCDC, the first death in Nigeria has been recorded. The case was a 67-year-old male who returned home following medical treatment in the UK. He had underlying medical conditions, uh, including multiple meloma, diabetes, and was undergoing chemotherapy. Well, indeed, our thoughts are with the family at this time. Again, Nigeria has recorded its first casualty of the COVID-19, a 67-year-old Nigerian who recently returned from the UK. Uh, we have a total number of 36 confirmed cases yeah, very, in Nigeria. Very, very painful case, very painful one there, sad one. Obviously, you know, there's a case of comorbidity, diabetes, and multiple melanoma, you know, going through chemotherapy that yeah. weakens the immune system already. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just a sad cry. And it, it is a call on all of us that we must all fight, you know, COVID-19. It's time to fight it. You know, please. Do, do not, not let your guard down because you do not know who is the carrier and who is going do, to be do, infected. Do, especially let, so I want to make a clarion appeal mm. this morning. Please, if you do not have business calling the line, if you don't have a genuine case, don't call the line. The NCDC line don't and call the help the lines. The line. Line. It is only when you have a genuine case you should call the line because the lines are jam packed. Now, people that have serious concerns cannot reach. I listened I mean, to the CEO of the NCDC, sorry, Shaitan, say this morning that yesterday alone we had 4,000 calls on that number. Again, you have it there on your screen. Uh, this morning alone, Nigeria recorded, Nigeria recorded five new cases. Uh, uh, bringing the total number to 36. After, out of that, we've had the first casualty, a 67-year-old 67-year-old uh, Nigerian who recently returned from the UK. He had underlying medical conditions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, very quickly before we go, as you've said, of course, bombarding the lines. Of course, if you know you've been exposed in any way, please stay at home. There's no need to go out. You know, no. social distancing is a thing. Please, let's make sure I, we do And it. I also think the city should open up an email request line, a, a email hotline. Yeah. It's really important. A lot to be done. Well, that brings us to the end of the show today. Thank you all so much for watching. I am Adis or Omar Ryan. I'm Rafael Yosseli. And I am Shaito Atigari. Thank you for watching. You can also follow us on all our social media handles showing now on the screen with live streaming, of course, on Arise.tv.